Good morning, welcome back dear students. I am physics professor Dr. Nagraj explaining quantum computation. So this is the part of first year engineering physics syllabus VTU. So it is for computer science and allied branches. In my previous video I already explained, I gave a brief introduction to the quantum computation. I just explained what is Moore's law and uh, end of the Moore's law and then uh, implications of reducing the size of the microprocessors and increasing the number of transistors in the given IC. Okay, so quantum computation. Before I start with quantum computation, let me talk about classical computation. Today's classical computation. So computers, today's computers, I hear onwards call them as classical computers. Okay, what these classical computers are doing, they take some data, which we call as input, and do some operations, okay, process, and then give some result, which you call as output. So input, they take input, and process something and then give output. This input is essentially in terms of binary codes that is 0 and 1. 0 and 1, two options that's all. 0 means on, 1 means off. Or 0 means open, 1 means closed. 0 means bottom, 1 means top. Something like that it goes. So in order to store something, I need two options. Two options are zeros and 1. Initially, these zeros and ones were in the form of on and off of a bulb. If you have a circuit consisting of two bulbs, bulb 1 and bulb 2, and you have a power supply like this, Okay, if you have a switch over here, and if you switch on, both the bulbs will glow, both are in the one state. If I have a switch over here, and if it is closed, and this switch is open, okay, this switch is open, this is closed, then this is on, this is off, this is off, and this is on, like that. Or if you close this, if you open this and close this, we switch on, switch off, that's all. Switch on, switch off, bulbs will glow, bulbs will switch off. So to send some signal, we use this, we can use this, we were using this. See, this is not very new technique, okay, age-old concept. Does it mean that in olden days, in ancient period, we didn't, we, did, we had bulbs. We didn't had bulbs, in fact. They had some other techniques to display, to explore, or to expose, or express their ideas. Okay, many, many concept they had used even to send some secret signals also our ancestors our Peru people had their own techniques okay to send some secret code code we call it as you know uh, uh, encryption codes okay so cryptography it is called as cryptography Crypto cryptography they had their own techniques I give you an example Julius Caesar for example Julius Caesar had a very peculiar technique you know what his technique was he used to send the messages in English alphabets. What is the peculiarity? What is special here, sir? In English alphabet, if we send a message, everybody will see. So, for example, I meet you. So, this is a signal. This is a message. If you send this message, how can you call it a secret? It is no more a secret. Yes, if you arrange letters in this order, definitely it is no more a secret. But uh, Julius Caesar had a special technique. He used to write English alphabet in a different manner. Like, uh, if you write A, you have to read it as D. That means leave B and C, read it as a D. This technique he had. If he writes F, you read it as E, F, G, you have to leave, H, you have to leave, E, F, G, H, I, F means I, A means D like that. So in this order, if you go, dear students, I give you one small task. What actually this means? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Pause this video and check what actually it means according to Julius Caesar. Cold corresponds to, yes, it corresponds to frog. C, D, E, F, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, L, M, N, M, N, O, D, E, F, G. So in between two, two alphabets you have to leave. Like this, our people had their own techniques, own techniques. Like that gradually techniques evolved. <coughs> 
and uh, when computer came in in order to write the programs they adopted what is called on and off technique on and off techniques in terms of zeros and ones okay bulb on bulb off black and white black and white is also a coding system black is zero white is one or white is zero black is one like that it goes so here now right now we have zero means current no flow one means current flow you have a circuit for example you have a diode in this manner this is another diode okay so you connect them to a battery okay if you connect them to a battery suppose the diode one is forward biased okay okay you know what is forward bias if diode one is forward bias current flows there so this is one if this is reverse bias current doesn't flow it is zero <coughs> like that ones and zeros finally forms the basis of the entire computer operation whether it is a basic language, advanced language, operating system, whatever you tell about the computer ultimately comes down to zeros and one. It will be either zero state or one state, zero forum or one forum. It is called bit, zero bit or one bit. And these two together are called classical bits, classical bits. Okay, so this zero <coughs> and one are two distinct states. See, well, these zeros and ones are going to be the basis of classical computation. Zero means on, sorry, off, and one means on. And these zeros and ones are used to design what is called gates. And well known gates are <coughs> AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate, XOR gate, XOR gate, like that. There are many gates. And we have a well designed algebra called Boolean algebra for this. Okay, so Boolean algebra, algorithm, gates, zeros and ones means classical bits. These are all part and parcel of our classical computers. And in computers, we have what is called register. Register is a sort of flip flop circuit which stores these binary data in it. And the size of the register is measured in terms of number. 4 bit register. 4 bit register. What it means? 4 bit register. Register is something like your wallet. So, okay, in a broader sense, I can call register as a wallet. Wallet holds the money. Okay, in your purse, you have 100 rupee, 200 rupee, 10 rupee, 50 rupee, 1000, uh, 500 rupee, 2000 rupee, even some coins also. Even everything it holds and when required it will release the means you want to buy pen you give 50 rupee you want to buy uh, some masala dosa or something like that you pay 100 rupee like that you re release the money depending upon what you purchase for what purpose you are spending so like that wallet for bore bit register or any bit register is a wallet it will hold binary data in it and will give the data for the processing purpose for the processing purpose if I say it is 4 bit data then it will do 2 to the power of n operations that means 2 to the power of 4 that means 16 so at a time my wallet will search from 0 to 15 so many searches it will do and will give only one result out of it like you take out the wallet search more the money pick 50 rupees from that so like that so this is the 4 bit register even though 16 calculations it does one particular at a time it gives only one at a time it gives only only one very next moment it will give one more like okay you purchased a pen you gave 50 rupee you purchased one pencil you give 10 rupee the shopkeeper asks so there is no 10 rupee change you give so you will give like that but at a time you are giving only one currency note similarly this also okay so our classical computers are having zeros and ones gates registers and registers can perform to the power of n operations and so on well this is our classical computer now coming to quantum computer computer quantum computer works on the principle of quantum mechanics what is quantum mechanics that i will tell you later on in quantum computer we have again zero and one only but they are not called as bits they are called as quantum bits i call it as q bits okay quantum bits are qubits qubits are equivalent to classical bits zeros and ones okay what is this qubit we will discuss later on i'm just giving comparison 
architecture. I'm just comparing classical computer with quantum computer. Then I take up quantum computer in a detailed manner. So in the previous video, I just gave you the importance of quantum computation and Moore's law and the limit of classical computer. In this video, I'm giving you a comparison between classical computer and quantum computer. Classical computer relies upon zeros and ones. Even quantum computer also relies upon zero and one only. But we call them as qubits. And the speciality of the qubits is it not only have zero state, not only have one state, they have in between also overlapped positions also. Zero to one, any number of states it can have. Sir, what actually does it mean? Does it mean that we have 0 0.5 in between, 0 0.75 in between, 0 0.2222 in between? No, 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 it is not in terms of number. Please, dear students, don't look at the zero and one as a number. Don't look at the zero and one as a number. They are representing something totally different like there. Zero represented off, no current. Anta. One represented, represented on and the current flow. Anta. It represented flow of current. One means not number one. One represents flow of current like that. Okay. So even here also, qubits not only exist in individually zero and one state, they exist even in the superposed states also. This is the first advantage of quantum computer. If that is the case, 4 qubit register, this is 4 bit register, 4 qubit register if you can design. How many operations that register will perform? Yes, exactly 2 to the power of n, that is 16 operations only. Even this also 16 operations only. But what is so special about this? So speciality is classical computer out of 0 to 15 only one at a time it will give whereas this will give all 16 at a time. Don't you think that it is an exponential increase? Yes. I repeat quantum computation qubits exist not only in individually 0 and 1 state they also exist in the superposed states at a time. At a time they can exist even in the overlapped state also. That way if you can design a 4 qubit register tomorrow that 4 qubit register can perform how many of operations 2 to the power of n that is 16 operations 16 operations all of a time or any one at a time all the time it is 16 operations all the time it can give 16 output 16 results so that means the speed speed is unimaginable compared to our classical computer it is unimaginable so according to one calculation a particular task called des data encryption system a particular task if you assign to our class classical computer, if it takes 100 years, follow this, 100 years, today's classical computers, if they take 100 years for, for operating this DES, quantum computer can finish off the job within 4 minutes. Just imagine, 100 years ali yen kelsa maadutta classical computer, adhano 4 minutes ali quantum computer maadi mugisi bishakate, adhu speed, that is a speciality, that is the efficiency of quantum computer. So still there are many questions, already I know, many questions are coming to your mind. I will try my level best to clarify all these doubts one by one. I am just comparing, first comparison, classical computers have Q, 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 classical bits, zeros and ones, quantum computer have four you know, qubits, that is also zero and one. And these zeros and ones are not represented like this. They are represented by a separate notation, which we call as a Dirac notation. That also I will explain later on. Okay. Next, uh, in classical computers, we have only zero and one, whereas in quantum computer, we have superposition also. In between zero to one, we have any number of states. Correct? Huh? Next. Classical computer zeros and ones comes because of the flow of current or no flow of current. Either because of the flow of electrons or no flow of electrons. For the current, there can be n number of electrons flowing or no electron flowing. If no electron flows, it is zero. If n number of electrons flow, you know how many electrons flow for one ampere current, that you can easily calculate with the help of this equation. Okay, I is equal to Q divided by T, that is Ne divided by T, you know E is a charge on the electron, T is the time, put current as one ampere. One into time is one, divided by E is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. If you simplify, you will get 
get n value even so many around 10 power 19 electrons will flow i think this is a very basic problem in puc you did this problem so when 10 power 19 electrons flow you get one ampere current so that one ampere current will perform the operation in the circuit some operation it will perform maybe amplifying maybe passing the signal maybe blocking the signal maybe filtering maybe converting ac to dc eno you one kelsa madute one ampere current hogi mukhya vagi current hogbek astene nam body nalli blood has to flow what actually it is going to do we don't know it will do multiple jobs at different positions it carries food it carries energy it carries medicine okay it carries waste part of also okay like that it will it will do many things at many places whatever the work it does in the brain same work is not done in the heart same work is not in the kidney not same work is done in the ear many operations many things it will do but one thing it has to flow that's all current has to flow so like that in uh, classical computers current is flowing in the form of electrons so electrons directly will not participate in zeros and ones current will participate in zeros and ones whereas in quantum term computation this is very important follow this sentence electron itself is participating in zeros and ones i hold those electrons let us say 10 to the power of 19 electrons are flowing billions of electrons are flowing i catch hold of one electron i hold that one electron and i will monitor them and i will guide that electron i will ask that electron to carry some special information i will ask that electron to go like this or i will ask the electron to go like this okay or i will ask the electron to rotate like this if i can manipulate at the electron level itself just imagine what miracle we can do at the time you can control so many electrons you know so many electrons you can use for your purpose so many electrons you can use for storing the energy so many electrons can be used to store the information and you can use those electrons to perform the operation what you need this is the quantum computation's essence what i mean to say in classical computation current does the job whether current is flowing in silicon germ Aluminium or copper, silver that is secondary. Electron flow that is current is doing the job. Whereas in quantum computation, electron itself will do the job of storing the information. Electron itself is acting like a bit. Electron spin may be acting. Electron's energy level may be acting. Electron's orientation may be acting. Not only electron, even proton or I can even use photons also. So I play with the particles. I play with the particles. I deal with the particles. I won't deal with the bulk property. I deal with the bottom level of the material. There is enough space at the bottom. This is what Richard Feynman said. Feynman is one of the greatest physicists of 20th century. He gave the idea of quantum computation long back in 1970. In 1981, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, no, reopened by one person from Argonne lab that is Paul Benioff. Paul Benioff mentioned quantum computation for the first time in 1981. He gave theoretical background for that and slowly it is growing. Okay, that is history. Let us not focus more on the history. Back to this. I was talking about the differences between classical and quantum computation. One more difference. One more difference. Our classical computers are based upon macroscopic circuits like gates. Macroscopic circuits like gates. Of course, even here also we have they are called logic gates even in quantum computation also we have gates and they are called quantum gates we have uh, different types of gates that also we will discuss it is a part of our syllabus we have x gate y gate z gate c not gate police gate hadamard gate tafoli gate all these gates are going to execute the job what and or not x are doing okay so next difference next difference circuits are macroscopic circuits are micro we have to build very small circuit, atomic level circuit, so the size may reduce further. And one more thing, our classical computers, classical computers have what is called limited speed. 
limited speed okay if i mention this to any other computer teacher today he may not accept but definitely they will realize that today's computers are of no use maybe after 10 years because they have limited speed and limited memory capacity whereas quantum computers definitely they have edge on the classical computers okay so like this there are many differences even output output there is certain 100% exact this is probabilistic what is the probabilistic output we will discuss later on so like this we have some comparisons I just repeat classical computer relays upon classical bit zeros and ones here they relay upon quantum bit zero and one representation is open zero and one this is a you know uh, direct notation like this zero and one and there we have only two distinct states where we have zero to one many overlapped states okay there we have what is called current doing the job here we have electrons or photons doing the job for us there we have macroscopic circuits here we have what is called microscopic circuit there it is perfect or exact output here it is probabilistic output that probabilistic output I will elaborate in my next video so today in this video we discussed about the comparison what is classical computer what is quantum computer advantages or disadvantages but remember I have not started quantum computation yet for understanding the quantum computation you need very basics of quantum mechanics in quantum mechanics already you studied about wave particle dual nature so in quantum mechanics we don't treat particle as a particle yes that is first point second thing particle position is not measured accurately please recall wave function wave function represents uh, probability of finding the particle and the probability of finding the particle can be complex therefore we go for modulus of size square this is called probability density okay and no measurement is accurate all the measurements are probabilistic this is your famous Heisenberg uncertainty principle and we have what is a uh, that famous equation is called Schrodinger wave equation so and we have what is called tunneling effect of particle so these are all the specialities of quantum mechanics if not all some of them are used in quantum computation so what are all the points used in the quantum computation or what are all the specialities of quantum mechanics particle nature wave nature wave nature and particle nature together and wave function probability density tunneling effect uncertainty principle all these things we are going to make use in quantum computation okay we will discuss one by one i hope you are enjoying my teaching thank you thank you very much